Thank you, and um, good morning. I think we still have a little bit of morning left. I'm happy to be with you today, and my name is Erin Martin, and I'm a rowing evangelist, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about rowing and play and how I define that. Um, it's so nice to be with all of you today. Um, I didn't have a chance to shake your hands when you came in the room, but I often find that when I shake people's hands, a little bit of horror, a quick glimpse of horror runs across their face and they recoil a little bit. And it's because I have extremely calloused, blistered hands from rowing. And um, rowing is a sport that's not quite for everybody because there are a number of things that are quite challenging and one of them is blisters. This is my husband, and uh, he's been rowing since he was 11 years old, and he was recently training for the head of the Charles. So these rather unappetizing photos, which are timed before lunch specifically, <laughs> are, are just to show you a little bit of, of one element of the pain that is part of the sport of rowing, but it's not a deterrent for some of us. The other element of rowing, um, any of you who've had some experience with it will know that rowing is a fantastic workout. It works every muscle in your body. It builds strength and endurance. It's, um, it's non-weight bearing. So if you have any injuries, any, any weak joints or problems, it's an excellent sport for what we call a mid-career athlete. And we have lots of people who come and row who, who start in their 40s, their 50s, even their 60s. And they find they get a lot of enjoyment out of it and it's a great workout. But all, in all full disclosure here, it hurts. Rowing hurts a little bit. It's um, at the average workout, even just a casual workout, you're going to take 2,000 strokes. And each one of those strokes is a repeated motion, repeated movement. It's the, ideally, it's the exact same movement every single time. And over time, the, the lactic acid builds up in your muscles, there's fatigue, and, and it starts to hurt. So immediately you have this sort of game with your mind about, oh, it hurts, I want to stop. And that, that kind of pain actually triggers your, your flight or fight mechanism, which can raise your stress level. So you automatically have this dialogue with your body about, should I stop or should I keep going? And these are just some, some, of, the, some of the things that rowing can do to your face when you row. <laughs> I suppose in some way it could be good for your facial muscles too, but um, these are just a few pictures. And I want you to remember these pictures as we go forward because um, I, I want, I'm going to come back to this, this, these contorted faces. But somehow, despite all of this, we row. We go ahead. Um, I happen to row uh, on the Passaic River at Neriad Boat Club in Rutherford. I'm just wondering how many people here are from either Bergen or Essex counties? A lot of you. What, what do you, when you hear Passaic River, what, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Dirty. Trash, uh, yeah, pollution, super fun site, um, dead bodies, I, we often hear that one. Um, Jimmy Hoffa even, some people think Jimmy Hoffa is buried here. And um, the truth is a terrible thing happened to the Passaic River in its history. It was going back to Alexander Hamilton, it was his idea actually that the Passaic should be this mega industrial corridor. And for more than 100 years, it was that industrial corridor. The lower part of the Passaic was actually dammed. It was walled, which is a terrible thing for, uh, for a tidal river. So when the river, when the waters are high, when, the, when, when we have high tides, there's no place for the water to go. So we often have flooding. So it was a terrible thing. Never mind the, the dumping of paints and chemicals and other things that went into the river. It was really a, really a tragedy what happened to this river in the 40s and 50s and 60s, though it did help build our economy in the region. Um, but the ironic thing is that when the Passaic became so dirty and polluted, human beings completely abandoned it, but Mother Nature never left. Mother Nature stayed there. And for the last 20 or 30 years, the Passaic River has just flourished as this place of natural beauty. Um, I'm, I can never get over how persistent the wildflowers are in poking through those concrete walls and coming up. And these are some shots along the river, um, actually from our boathouse, and you can just see the way the, the wildflowers prol proliferate. And we're not talking Glacier National Park here, but um, it's, a, it's a beautiful spot. It's a great recreational asset. There are lots of birds there. I, I happen to like birds a lot. 
There, we, I think we've seen every species of heron that we find in the Northeast there this summer. We see osprey, we see all kinds of things. So the Passaic is really a hidden gem and it's a resource for all of us. There are lots of places, um, public places where you can put in a kayak or put in a boat. So it's, it's a great spot to use. Um, when I was asked to do this talk, um, I went back to the dictionary, and I know it's really, really trite and tacky to put up definitions when you're doing a presentation, but as a writer, I often find myself going back to my, my um, Webster's New World Dictionary and, and looking at things, and I was so surprised when I looked at the definition to see how long the definition of play was, because of, of course I was thinking about things like you know, playing a role in a play or playing an instrument or just playing like kids play, and, but what I hadn't really thought about was how expansive the definition of play is. And I thought about things like, um, like movement, like, like um, sunlight playing on waves, that kind of movement. Or um, our friend Sean, a fisherman, having play in the line. And there's really so many ways to think about play. And, um, and that's what, that's what I, I started to think about the connection between rowing and playing, because I never really thought about it as playing. I thought about it as a spiritual outlet and athletic activity that was good for me and a way to get away from it all, but I never really thought about the concept of play. But it really is very much about that. Um, I, this is a video of some, some young rowers who are uh, actually, they're, they're part of Nereid's Club, but a couple of them are from Ridgewood High. I could easily put up some rowers from Montclair High because they have a fantastic team. But um, when you get in the boat, you, you make some kind of contract with, with your body and the equipment in the water. And um, it's, a, it's a partnership. As soon as you put your oars in the water, something really magical happens. It's almost like a witchery of some sort that you, you connect and you find this inner connect, connectedness with the, with the water and the environment and then what you feel inside. And um, for me, it's something really profoundly elemental and freeing. And, um, I, I think if you, if you just look at these guys, you, what, what you may not realize is that there are four rowers in this boat, but you only see one because they're moving so perfectly together. And they're, it, it's, a, it's a kind of ballet when it's done well. And for me, it's the, it's the closest thing to, to flying. And um, so when I think about playing um, I, and I think about rowing, I've, I've found this freedom of movement. And, um, I wanted to just go back to the, um, the, the relaxation point before, because um, you remember how, can, how those faces were all screwed up in those photos, and if you look at this young woman here, she doesn't exactly look happy, I would say, but she's completely relaxed. And that's, re that's really the secret to her success. Um, there was a great story in the New York Times during the last Olympics about, um, about how the, the runners who win the 800 meter race are the ones who literally, physically are the most relaxed. And they're the ones who can, who can reconcile the, the message that their muscles are giving them about, about stop, don't do this, it hurts, put, stop immediately. They reconcile that with something else that says you're on a different track. Just surrender to that superficial physical pain and go with it and run with it and you're going to succeed. And that's, that's really very much what rowing does as well. If you can let go of the superficial things and the things that your body is telling you and go into that inner place, you find great rewards. And so for me, rowing is my form of play. And I wanted to just share that with you today. So feel free to give it a try. We do learn to row classes for adults and, and juniors. So come on by. Thank you. Thank you.